Christina, did you hide it somewhere? Did you take it? My husband Elliot, his face flushed with anger, accuses me. His newly purchased cherished luxury watches disappeared from the shelf where it was stored. It wasn't me! I don't know anything about your watch! Who else could it be? You say you're working at home every day, but I don't even know what you're actually doing! Give it back, thief! I told you! I didn't take it! No matter how many times I say this, my husband's anger won't subside. He won't listen. Hearing this, my mother-in-law, Carol, who had been listening, revealed a sly and unpleasant smile. Christina, you were cleaning during the day, weren't you? Did you lose it somewhere then? Indeed, during the day, I reluctantly did it in between my work because she told me to clean. But I didn't touch my husband's watch. I told them so, but neither of them believed me. That watch was extremely expensive. Find it right away. You get no food until you find it. Wait a minute. Please. No, stop. Despite my resistance, my husband forcefully... My name is Christina. I've been married to my husband Elliot for three years. A year ago, my husband insisted that he felt sorry for his mother living alone, and we decided to live together. I was reluctant because my mother-in-law often made sarcastic remarks, but Elliot was adamant and I reluctantly agreed. With a move-in, we bought a house with a mortgage in his name. I worked from home and the larger house made it easier for me to do my job. However, my husband, who goes to work every day, doesn't understand that working at home is still work. He thinks I'm just playing on the internet and doesn't take my job seriously. Even when I explain my job, he doesn't get it because it's different from his. He swings around this strange idea that real work is sweating and working outside. You were playing on the internet again today, weren't you? You're a lazy type who can't work. I, on the other hand, was busy all day today. I have a lot to do because everyone relies on me. He often says things like that. For being busy and having a lot to do, your salary is kind of low. My husband earns a low wage, but he's a show-off. Before we moved in together, he was forced to send money to his mother every month. He would pay the full amount for drinks at gatherings, saying I'll pay, and he also has a habit of wasting money on expensive bags, shoes, and recently, a luxury watch that cost over $10,000. I've told him many times to stop and to consider our finances, but he ignores me. So when we run out of money for living expenses or loans, I pay them. Carol, who doesn't know anything about these things, takes my husband's words at face value and misunderstands that I'm just playing on the internet. Christina, if you have time to play, clean this place! Carol, I'm working now. Yeah, but even if you say you're working, you're not working outside like Elliot, so you're not earning much, right? Come on, hurry up and clean! Or, Christina, I'm meeting my friends now, so get the car ready. Chop, chop. What are you going to do if I'm late because of you? She makes me do housework or drives her around even when I'm working, which is a problem. Hey, Elliot, your mother has this weird idea that work has to be done outside. She doesn't seem to understand the concept of working from home. I can't work like this, you know. I complained to my husband, but he only said, You should just do it for my mother. Christina, you're so petty. And the discussion didn't go anywhere after this. Then one day, my husband came home from work and stormed over to me with a red face. Christina, where did you put my luxury watch? Did you hide it somewhere? Did you take it? He was furiously angry at me, his face red. His newly purchased luxury watch had disappeared from the shelf where it had been kept. It was nowhere to be found. It wasn't me! I don't know anything about your watch! I never touch his thing, so it couldn't be me. But my husband was convinced I had done it. Who else could it be?
You say you're working at home every day, but I don't even know what you're actually doing. You rifled through my shelves and took it, didn't you? Give it back, thief. Like I said, I didn't take it. No matter how many times I said this, his temper wouldn't subside. He wouldn't listen. Carol, who had been listening to our conversation, showed a sly and unpleasant smile. Christina, you were cleaning during the day, weren't you? Did you lose it somewhere then? Indeed, during the day, I reluctantly cleaned in between my work because she told me to do so. But I didn't touch my husband's watch. I told them so, but they didn't believe me. That watch was extremely expensive. Find it right away. You get no food until you find it. Wait a minute! Please, stop! Open up! Please! No way! Start looking in this room first. And he locked me in the room. I searched the house thoroughly, but I couldn't find his watch. Elliot, I'm hungry. No, I told you, no food until you find it. I couldn't leave the house, so I couldn't go out to buy anything, and I was being watched, so I couldn't eat in secret. I ended up going 24 hours without food. The watch was never found, and my husband finally said, It's your responsibility. Since you didn't find it, you have to compensate for it and pay for the watch. I couldn't afford to pay nearly $10,000 for a luxury watch when we were barely making ends meet. But no matter what I told him, Elliot insisted that I pay. I had no choice but to increase my workload. Between the heavy load of work, housework, and looking after Carol, I was worn out both mentally and physically. When I went back to my parents' place for a change of pace on my day off, my father, Samuel, immediately noticed my state. Christina, what's wrong? You look pale. Dad, actually... I told my father about increasing my work recently, how living together was harder than I thought, how I was worried about getting along with my husband and mother-in-law, but I didn't want to worry him too much. My father listened to my story seriously. It's hard for strangers to get along all of a sudden, but Christina, don't hesitate to rely on me if you're in trouble. You can even come back home if you want. Thanks, Dad. My father comforted me gently. Just that made me feel relieved, and I felt better. He's always there to listen, gently supporting me without being too intrusive. I can't thank him enough. A few days later, I received a call from an unfamiliar number on my smartphone. Suspicious, I answered it to find out it was from a hospital. They told me that my father had been in an accident and was in a critical condition. When I told Elliot and Carol, they urged me to go to the hospital immediately, so I headed to the hospital where my father was taken. Apparently, my father was hit from behind by a car while he was walking. The car that hit him seemed to have driven off immediately, and the police were investigating. As my unconscious father lay there, I felt a desperate need to pray. But first, I needed to contact Elliot and Carol. I wouldn't be able to return home anytime soon. I made a call home from the hospital. My husband answered the phone with a brisk voice. Elliot, I'm sorry. My father hasn't woken up yet, so I can't come home right away. I understand. You should stay with him. But Christina, if anything happens to your father, the inheritance will go to you, right? Excuse me? Don't say that! Just checking. The inheritance will go to you, right? Well, yeah, but... Okay, got it. Keep up the good work taking care of him. Something about my husband's cheerful voice felt off. It was as if it was happening to some stranger, not his father-in-law. Besides, how utterly low of him to bring up the topic of inheritance at such a time. I was deeply disgusted by his words. Two days later, I decided to go home for a while. When I arrived, I noticed Carol's car was missing from the garage. She must have gone out. As I entered the house feeling a bit relieved that she wasn't there, I was surprised to see both her and Elliot at home. Jesus! I didn't know you guys were both here! 
Christina, you've been cheating, haven't you? Both my husband and his mother were angry, their eyes narrowed in rage. I had no idea what they were talking about when they suddenly accused me of cheating. Cheating? There's no way I would do that! What's gotten into you all of a sudden? I know you were with a man last Friday. I had a meeting with a client for work. Is that what you're talking about? I wasn't cheating. The very fact that you were meeting a man in secret means you were cheating. You're terrible. If just meeting with someone from work equates cheating, I was beyond exasperated. But no matter how much I argued that they were wrong, they wouldn't listen. You're lying about meeting a client just to deceive Elliot. We're not falling for that. But Carol, I'm telling the truth. Liar! Get out of this house! She grabbed my arm, shoved my somehow already packed belongings at me, and tried to kick me out of the house. Hold on! You're misunderstanding! Shut up! Just get out! We'll send the rest of your things later. You should be grateful for that. They kicked me out of the house and never let me back in. Why would they suddenly suspect me of cheating? I would never cheat on my husband. Confused, I decided to go back to my parents' house. The next day, all my belongings were delivered. What's going on? Everything seems too organized. As I thought this and started sorting through my things, I noticed something strange. No matter how much I looked for it, my bank card was nowhere to be found. Why was this the only valuable item missing even though the others were there? I remembered when my father had his accident, Elliot seemed overly concerned about the inheritance. I remembered the discomfort I felt at that time. When he heard that the inheritance would go to me, he seemed pleased. Could it be that he stole my card for that reason? If I think about it this way, it makes sense that they suddenly started suspecting me of cheating. They used this as an excuse to kick me out of the house, to monopolize the inheritance. The anger began to boil within me at this realization. I clenched my fists in frustration. I couldn't forgive them for trying to take my father's inheritance away from me without even being concerned about his health. I will make them pay for this. A month later, the intercom at my parents' place rang repeatedly. When I opened the door, Elliot and Carol stormed in, their faces beat red. Hey, your bank card is not working! Care to explain? Explain what's going on! They said as they threw my bank card on the floor. So you two really did steal it? And we got a notice saying the mortgage hasn't been paid! What's going on? Of course the bank card doesn't work. I changed it after seeing how you splurge. This card right here is a decoy. The real one is kept safe here at my parents' house. And I stopped making mortgage payments when I was kicked out of the house. What did you say? My husband, furious, tried to grab me. That's when a stern voice said, Calm down. At the sound of the sharp voice, both Elliot's and Carol's shoulders flinched. Why? See my father emerge from the back of the house, they looked astounded. Surprised to see my father is healthy? He recovered from his critical condition. Indeed, my father had recovered and was able to be discharged from the hospital safely. I purposely didn't tell them about this. They seemed to think my father had died and were taken aback by his healthy appearance. I've heard everything from Christina. Elliot, what the hell is this? You didn't pay the mortgage or the living expenses, and you even stole the car planning to use my inheritance. Can't you tell the difference between right and wrong? Chastised by my father, Elliot trembled, his face pale. I hear you turned a blind eye when Christina was being insulted by her mother-in-law here and didn't even stand up for her. And you even kicked her out of the house accusing her of cheating without any proof. Elliot and Carol both seemed to be mumbling some excuses, but their voices were so small I couldn't hear them. 
Elliot, what were you planning to do with the money from the stolen card? Were you going to spend it on your mistress? I presented the evidence of his affair, which I had gotten by hiring a detective. You suspected me of cheating, but turns out the one who was actually cheating was you! In the photos, my husband was pictured with his mistress and she was visibly pregnant. After being kicked out of the house by my husband, I started to investigate why he was so desperate for the inheritance and I found out he was having an affair. It seems that some of his extravagant spending was on his mistress. Your mistress is pregnant with your child. Who's the terrible one now? I guess you were planning to divorce me after you got the inheritance, weren't you? Fine, let's go ahead and divorce then. Of course, I'll make sure to claim damages. When I mentioned the word divorce, both my husband and mother-in-law began to panic. Hold on, Christina! Elliot didn't mean any harm! Forgive him! Let's live together happily again! That's right! My mom was just being strict because she cared for you. Let's be a family of three again. They tried to close in on me defending each other. How dare they suggest living together again? The mere thought sent chills down my spine. When Carol tried to grab my arm, I shook her off. As she stumbled, something fell out of her pocket with a clatter. What the? Isn't this the luxury watch Elliot was looking for? Care to explain, Carol? With a guilty expression on her face, she picked up the watch. Uh, this is, um... She fumbled for an excuse, but it was clear from her flustered state that she had stolen it. Mom, you told me Christina stole it, but it was actually you who stole it? Oh, come on. You were also the one who tried to steal Christina's bank card. I'm not the bad guy here. It's all your fault, Mom. What are you talking about? It all started because you, Elliot, were complaining about not having enough money and your allowance was too small. I did all this for you. I thought Christina's dad was certainly going to die after the way he was hit. Then we could get the inheritance and I was planning to return the watch without selling it once we got the inheritance. My father and I exchanged looks at her words. Are you saying you caused my father's accident? Did you hit me with your car? She hung her head with a startled expression. Her face was drained of color and she was shaking. I suddenly remembered when I returned home from my father's hospital, her car was not in the garage. It was Carol who hit my father. She must have taken the car for repairs. After this, Carol was arrested by the police as expected, her motive was the inheritance. Afterwards, I successfully divorced my husband. I received a hefty amount of compensation. My ex-husband ran out of savings and couldn't pay the mortgage, so he had to give up the house. Even though he remarried his mistress, his ostentatious and condescending attitude didn't change, and they divorced. I heard from someone that he's struggling significantly with the alimony and child support. I have absolutely no sympathy for him. Rather, seeing him, I learned that if you make others unhappy for your own vanity and money, you will certainly face retribution. As for me, I met a wonderful person afterwards, and I'm now living happily ever after.